You are looking at Memorial Stadium on the campus of Naperville Central High School for this Class 6A semi-final football matchup between the Naperville Central Redhawks and the Romeoville Spartans. How you doing, everybody? Mark Kruger and Todd Kibbe. Glad to bring you this Class 6A playoff football action right here on Jones Intercable. Naperville Central, you all know, coming off of that Mud Bowl victory a week ago over Naperville North, 35-12. to Romeoville coming off of a shutout against Sandberg last week, 22 to nothing. And uh, Todd Kibbe, Naperville Central now at home, undefeated. The weather conditions certainly a little bit different tonight than a week ago. Well, they played a couple of bad weather games. They they got out of their a real cold game against Downers Grove South uh, at on the road at Downers South, and then they came back here last week, played in that horrendous downpour, torrential downpour. Now the field looks like it's still a mess, but the way that the that the way that they've been playing the past couple of weeks, I really don't see any problem for the for the sheer to uh, excuse me the Lavery to sheer connection, Mr. Left leg uh, <laughs> left leg Tumulty out there uh, going full bore. You know, maybe a little slick uh, going, but once they get the idea of how to how to run in this stuff, uh, I think it's going to be a great ball game. I don't think it, you know the weather. There's no wind this week. Uh, it's about 40 degrees as I saw coming in tonight. And I, just noticing the players and how they're acting before the game, uh, I, I think the uh, inspirational leader, as always, is number four out there, Jim Tumulty. And you know he doesn't want to see his last game be this game tonight, or any of the any of the uh, seniors that have been here. They lost this game last year to Naperville North for the chance to go downstate. So they've been to this point. They want to take that next step forward, and they're primed to do it tonight. Jim Tumulty with that torn anterior cruciate ligament will have surgery after the season. And last week's victory over Naperville North, 29 carries for 135 yards and three touchdowns. So even with that bad knee, he is still putting up the numbers, and that's got to be an inspiration for this entire team. Well, the three amigos, as I call them, they, they, they've done everything uh, throughout the playoffs. As you said, Tumulty last week, 135 yards. The week before, he had 180 and two TDs against Downers South. Uh, Lavery, he's got 2,002 yards passing to date. Um, last week, <clears throat> again, in that, in that bad weather game, only 115 yards, but the week before that, uh, 160 three and three TDs and uh, you know he, he brought brought him back in the first round against Hinsdale Central uh, two fourth quarter scores so and and most of the uh, receptions are going to Jason Scher on the other end of that catching um, every ball that he catches goes for at least 19 and a half yards so the three amigos are uh, primed and they want to take their r traveling road show downstate and face either York or Wheaton Warrenville South next week. Mark Pollock getting ready to kick off for Naperville Central. Naperville Central won the toss they have elected to kick off so they will get the ball to start the second half and this one is dropped at about the 13 yard line by Dan Sims Sims gets it out to about the 30 yard line and that's where the Romeoville Spartans will take over first and 10 Matt Jesielowski the senior quarterback for the Spartans a team which well the first game of the season they lost to Thornton they committed six turnovers to and then they won their next 11 ball games, averaging 35 points per game. Well, we've got two high-powered offenses here. 35 points a game, as you said, for the Romeoville. And Naperville Central puts up about 31 points a game. So I think, again, the key in this in this type of game with the, the field the way it is is going to be the defense and who can come up with the big sticks early uh, and uh, stop the, these high-powered offenses. Taylor and Denard are split over here to the near side. This is Rich Bernaski, the fullback, who gets right back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be second down and ten. Well, that's the kind of stops we're talking about. Just stick them right at the line of scrimmage. The Blackhawks have been coming up big the past couple of weeks. Uh, again, against Downer South, they, they were faced, uh, they were a touchdown behind going into the third quarter. Came up with a huge fourth fourth and goal stop and basically went, went on a 26-point turnaround. The offense did there and, and brought them back in this game. So their defense has continued to get stronger and stronger as the season's progressed and uh, typically by the way they played last weekend against Naperville North. Second down and 10 for the Spartans from the 30. And it's Jesse Olowski who will take it out to about the 34-yard line. Gain of two tots will bring up now a third and long situation. And 
Jesulowski from the air is 42 of 90 on the year, 47% completion rate for 882 yards and nine touchdowns. And we see Lavery for Naperville Central throw twice as much as Jesse Olowski. Well, again, they 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 have the two-back offense in Bernowski and Simic that they, they rely on also. So um, that's why Jesse Olowski's numbers may be down a little bit. But they've got, he's got a great receiver that he throws to, Ryan and Ryan Taylor. Big kid, uh, you know, look to go maybe D1 type program, but uh, he's one of the best in the state out in the flanker. On third down, they hand it off to the fullback Bernowski, and Bernowski is going to be short, I believe, of that first down. He's going to be maybe a yard. Well, he's going to be awful close, Todd. Yeah, they, they're, I don't think they're going to give it to him, but it brings up the first uh, critical call of the game uh, for the Spartans of Romeoville. They're right at about the 42 muddy, muddy yard line, and uh, looks like they're going to give a bring in the chain gang uh, just to verify that they're a little bit short, so the coaches that Romeo will have an opportunity to uh, assess what they want to do. We'll see a lot of Rich Bernowski, also Dan Simic, the other running back, Bernowski, gentleman who just ran the ball, is averaging just under eight yards per carry for the year, Todd. 148 carries, 1,155 yards for the year with 11 touchdowns. Well, again, that's quite impressive, and that, that's a, a testimony to this program. The, uh, they're, they're quite balanced, again, putting up 35 points a ball game. Nothing to uh, shake a stick at, so they, they didn't come up. They came up short. They're about... Uh, about a half a yard short, so here's the first uh, first big play of the ball game, Mark, and it's coming real early in the first period. Remember, Naperville North went to the air a week ago on fourth down and short. Kind of surprised a lot of people. We'll see what the Spartans do here, fourth and short. They hand it off to Bernaski, and he's uh -huh. going to get the first down. Almost had it stripped. Yeah, Grolke came up from his uh, defensive end spot and tried to pull the ball the way. He, he, he held Bernowski in the backfield, but with his second effort, Bernowski just bowled right ahead, had his uh, his body moving forward, so just enough to, just barely enough to pick up that first down. Ooh, it's going to get real muddy and real cold out there tonight. And I, think, I think one of the things that Central did last week that was awfully smart was they changed their jerseys at halftime to get the guys warm again. I bet they go back to that, that same thing tonight after they hose them down. First and 10 Spartans from the 42-yard line. Jesse Olowski on the option, flag on the play. Johnson pushes Jesse Olowski out of bounds, but we've got our first flag of the evening. Yeah, you're going to see Reggie Denard, number 45, called with either a holding or a, a clip. Uh, he got a hold of Rocky O'Shea and just kind of threw him back in the mud bath right there at about the 45-yard line. So I think that's going to see yeah, holding on. Uh, it was Reggie Denard. He, he tried to to, to uh, put a seal block on on Rocky as he was coming up from the from his defensive back spot, but uh, got a little bit too much of the jersey. It looks like it's key tonight keeping those hands clean, you know, <laughs> especially for the quarterback. He's got to get. It's going to be awfully muddy out there, as you can tell. It's just going to be. Uh, one nightmare for the equipment manager tomorrow morning. Walk off Ted against Romeoville. Bernaski, of course, and Simic in the backfield. We'll, we've got Denard and Taylor, the wideouts. Keith Olson, a six foot two inch, 195 pound tight end up front. You've got Chris Mooney, Andy Knapp, Rondell Hale, Ryan Stanich, and Tony Martinez, the offensive line for the Spartans. Uh, it's a pretty big offensive line, too, and a, an experienced line. Uh, They've been working well together all year. Again, putting together 11 and 0. That's those five guys are probably <coughs> the major reason for that. First and 19. Jesse Olaski rolling out and wide it's open. Complete. This is He's Reggie gone. Denard, and Reggie Denard is going to score. Touchdown, Spartans. Jesse Olaski to Reggie Denard. Blown coverage, Mark. Jesse Denard was kind of in between the corners and the safeties, and Jesse Olaski just lofted that ball up there. Denard caught it as he was running backwards, turned around, and boom. Nobody was there to catch him. Here you see it. Rolling out to his right. Jesse Olaski sets. There's a blown coverage. He's right between two defenders. He just takes off once he catches the ball for another 20 yards, 25 yards down the sideline for the first score of the night. Romeoville up 6-0. So the Romeoville Spartans 
on top now six to nothing with 946 to go in the opening quarter a similar situation to last week when Naperville North scored first Spartans going for the two-point conversion here Ooh. Simic is gonna get stuck Buckler on that stop there, man. Huge hit by Jeff Buckler coming up from his inside linebacking spot to stop that two-point conversion. So with nine minutes and 46 seconds left to play in the first quarter, it's the Romeoville Spartans scoring first. They lead it six to nothing, and now it's time for Naperville Central to see if they can answer the call of the Spartans. Well, the, the as you said, the um, Red Hawks won the toss, and they elected to defer until the second half. So, uh, put the defense out there first, and they got kind of got burnt by a big play, which they haven't been uh, they haven't been doing here in the playoffs as much. But you know, I think that's uh, we're going to see how the offense responds. But again, you, you would you would expect with these two teams scoring, each team scoring over 30 points a game, to see a lot of offense. And there you have it with the huge about a what about a 40 excuse me, 67 yard uh, pass reception from Jesse Olowski to Denard, you know, doing the last 20 of it on, on the ground, but um, I, I expect we'll see some, uh, see, see some explosive fireworks going on tonight, Mark. Getting ready to kick off for Romeoville will be Jim McDonald. Red Hawks will go up against a Spartan defense that shut out Sandberg last week. 22 to nothing. Red Hawks going to get good field position here. Mike. Brought down at the 37-yard line is number 25. Mike Savea came up on one of the up backs uh, on a kind of a squib kick. Again, I didn't think I don't think Romeoville wants to put it in the hands of uh, Jason Shearer back there. Uh, again, one of the three amigos. But uh, he, now he's got to face all three of them with uh, Tumulty in the backfield along with Lavery and Shear and Cade split out this way. Jason Shear split wide to the far side now. First and ten for Lavery. Going in motion is Kevin Gerwig. And it's going to be Jim Tumulty. Tumulty goes. cuts back here to the outside, across midfield, and inside Spartan territory. First and ten, Tumulty. I, I don't think that knee's hurting too bad, <laughs> Mark. Tumulty, again, with that, that $1,200 knee brace that he's got on there. Um, there's probably about one in 100 people that could do this uh, normally, and he's got a knee brace on his leg. There he goes. Ryan Taylor's the only one to bring him down at about the 46-yard line. But a great run by Jim Tumulty. And again, first player you want to touch the ball on your, if you're Coach Bungie on offense is Jim Tumulty, number four. First and ten now, Red Hawks from the 47. And again, it's Tumulty. Met at the line of scrimmage. It happened last week, Mark. Oh, looks like a turnover, Todd. It's a turnover. Tumulty comes up. He was holding the ball a little bit loose as he went around that left side. Number 90 for the... Spartans, Sean Galloway, right. senior linebacker yeah. with the recovery. Well, Tumulty was holding the ball, going off to the left side. He got hit by number 40 there, Chris, Chris Ma, Matt, McMath, jarred the ball loose. And as you said, Sean Galloway comes up with the big stick, or with the big recovery. So, you know, turnovers... Uh, are going to be a, play one of the huge factors in this game. It's done it. It's been one of the big factors all the way through these playoffs, and uh, you can't afford it now. First and ten, Spartans now. And Jesse Olowski, the option. This is Simic, the tailback, and Simic to the far side, knocked out of bounds by Rocky O'Shea. A week ago, Todd, it was Jim Tumulty fumbling early in the ballgame. First play from scrimmage, and here, second play from scrimmage, he fumbles tonight. Well, he did it also in the Downer South game. Um, on the ensuing kickoff, uh, when they went down 21-14, to 14, uh, put the ball in Tumulty's hands, and he and he, he lost it. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember if it was due to a hit, but this one was obviously the hit of Chris McMath. Uh, put, put the helmet right on the ball, and um, you can't afford those type you can't afford the penalties and the turnovers in a game that's going to send you downstate. 
gain of four on that play. It'll be second down and six now for the Spartans. Jesselowski will keep it himself. Look at the speed. 40, 30, 20. Jesselowski, the quarterback, and he's going to get brought down at about the four-yard line by Williams. You saw the speed of the quarterback, Jesselowski. Well, Jesselowski isn't a big kid. He's 5'10", 170 pounds, but he flew around the corner. It wouldn't have been for D.J. Johnson trying to pick him up. There was a good fake inside, but there was nobody to seal back there, and off to the races he goes. Look at that. Right down the side, Rocky O'Shea can't get him. D.J. Johnson finally pulls him down with a good pursuit angle at about the three-yard line, but after a huge 44-yard gain. Spartans coming out er quickly here to open up this semi-final ball game. The Central got behind early in the first game against Hinsdale Central. Luckily, they recovered, but uh, it took them until the fourth quarter to get it going, and if they could... Uh, if they get in that same situation, when the competition gets this much greater, I don't know, that's going to be a tough, an uphill battle. Bernaski, the is. fullback, he's in with the two-point conversion, and it's the Romeoville Spartans in. A little bit of a surprise here early on at Memorial Stadium. They lead it 14 to nothing. Seven minutes and 49 seconds. There you see it. We'll keep it here at Memorial Stadium, and it is a stunned Naperville Central crowd here tonight. Well, the crowd is stunned, and I'm a little bit stunned to say, to say so myself. This Romeoville squad obviously not stunned, wanting to come out and prove a point that they belong here. I mean, with 11-0 run uh, and only one blemish on their record, they are certainly a team to, to contend with. And again, after last week putting it down, uh, putting it to Sandberg with a score of 22 to nothing, they are uh, a very, very good squad, Mark. Be a penalty against Romeoville. They're going to try for the two-point conversion again. Jesse Olowski to the far corner. You're going to give it to him. Just right at Get the in. corner. Right at the end. Jim Cleary tried to come over and knock him off knock him off of the angle to the pylon, but he didn't do it. That's going to give him the two-point conversion. So it's quite a bit of a shocker here, Mark, I would think, with uh, less than first, excuse me, less than half of the first half, first quarter gone. And uh, this the home central Redhawks down 14 to nothing. Seven minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the opening quarter, and this is a stunned Naperville Central Red Hawk football team, but we've seen it, Todd, averaging over 31 points per game. Certainly, they can come back, and they certainly will. Well, I think they will, but, I mean, you got to give it the, the credit so far to the offensive line of Romeoville, and these guys are big. you got one guy, Rondell Hale, the center, is 185 pounds, but everybody else is 205. Standage is 205, Andy Cap is 230, Martinez is 225, and Mooney goes 205, so it's a huge line, and they have just done a fantastic job moving the Red Hawks on moving the defenders for the Red Hawks off the line of, scr off the line of scrimmage and uh, just opening up huge holes for, as you saw, Jesse Olowski to just scamper down the sidelines. So hats go off to them uh, so far through this point, this point of the game. McDonald to kick it off. This is Jason Scher. He's got some room up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles across the 40. He's at midfield and pushed out of bounds at about the 47-yard line of Romeoville. A nice return that time by Jason Scher and the Red Hawks in good field position. Well, Jason did a great job of not putting his hand down and slipping as he picked up the ball. And he followed his blockers there. Nice move to keep his balance off to the left side. And again, Chris Denard, the only one between him and the goal line on that particular play. And uh, it could have been six for, for Jason and the Red Hawks. But again, great field position right at about the 45-yard line. And um, again, he, you know, it, it's early. Uh, it's not a time to panic if you're the uh, Red Hawks. But you certainly want to put something together here and, um, and, and kind of get back on track. Gerwig coming in motion here to the near side. Lavery will hand it off to Tumulty, who's got room up the middle to the 35, where he is brought down, but it's going to be a first down for the Red Hawks. Maurice Owens, the cornerback, had to bring down Tumulty. We'll take another look at it here, Todd Kibbe. 
Well, again, you want the ball in that man's hands, and he just makes it happen once he gets it. He just cut right at the 35-yard line to see if he could bounce out a little bit further. At that point, Maurice Owens was the only one there. Uh, but again, J Jim Tumulty just does it all. And, you know, he, granted, he's uh, fumbled in each of the three games, but he's certainly uh, doing a great job. First and 10 from the 35, going to share, incomplete. We saw that play work so many times. The pump fake from Lavery, just a little bit overthrown to Jason Share here on the near side. Well, again, that's, that's their favorite route. And Lavery was just a little bit long on that particular pass. And again, maybe it was due to the mud or the uh, conditions of the field that Shear couldn't get under that ball. But uh, I'm sure we'll see that play a little bit later in the ballgame, too. Uh, that pump fake has worked well for, for the Red Hawks and Lavery. Second down and 10 now for Coach Joe Bungie's Red Hawks from the 35. Watch Grot back in this spot. Curly going in motion. Stevens is a lone setback for Central. Lavery under pressure, and he is going to get dropped by Andy Knapp, a six foot two inch, 230 pound senior, and a flag on the play. Well, actually, I think that's just a towel on the, on the field, Mark. I don't think it's a penalty flag, but uh, I would have called it too. <laughs> Again, Andy Knapp just coming right up the middle. Uh, rel relatively untouched by the guard there on that particular play. And again, Knapp going both ways for the Spartans. Uh, playing one heck of a one heck of a play there for, for the defense. And they will leave that towel out on the field there. <laughs> Confuse me a little bit. Third, now you're going to see a flag. Third and 17. Lavery across the middle. Oh. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Well, I thought Jerry Cutt on the left side moved a little bit on that particular play, but Kevin Cade, again, Lavery just about a half step in front of his receivers to this point. Uh, Shear down the right side, and Cade that particular time just uh, can't get under it. And I, I think it's due to timing. The timing patterns that they've been running all year uh, have been working, but in these conditions, they ha Lavery may have to just not lead them as much because they just can't get there in this in this muddy on this muddy field. Reggie Denard is back deep for Romeoville and a whistle here with six minutes, 28 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And I believe Romeoville will take a timeout here. Yeah. I think that came from Denard in the backfield. He, he didn't see something that still didn't get it. But you know Domino's <laughs> number, don't you? <laughs> Good for you. Uh, everything's squared away. Whoa. A high punt. Oh, looking for the corner, and it's going to be a, oh, it looks like it's going to go back into the end zone, I believe. Oh, I think we're going to get him right at the one-yard line. You're right. Oh, great kick by, I ben, think it was Monson. Yeah, Monson. 63, Troy Monson. Troy Monson with a beautiful punt. Bad snap. He had to go up high to get that one, but he put it right on the one-yard line, so that backs the Spartans up right in their own neighborhood right at the end zone so again they're going to leave it to the uh, those big offensive linemen right there but now now would be a good time for the uh, the opportunistic uh, red hawk defense to come up with a big play maybe put a stick here and uh, get the ball back in the hands of the offense real quick first and ten from the one now for the spartans Sielowski to the fullback Bernowski and Bernowski will get maybe two yards it'll be second down and eight just over six minutes to go first quarter well that's Dave Spicer coming up and Josh Hawkins the rest of the defense for the Red Hawks Jim Fortuno, Lisa Smentek, Brad Grolke and Josh Hawkins again as we said the, the ends the outside linebacking crew that they, they're, they're the keys to this defense Nick Paleo and Buckler in the middle uh, DJ Johnson, Rocky O'Shea, Jim Cleary, and Jim Holick uh, providing the defensive backfield. So it's an experienced squad, and they've, they've been stunned here early, but uh, now it'd be with the poor field position for Romeoville, now would be a good time to maybe pick those spirits up, come up with a stick, and get the ball back in the hands of your offense. Gain of three, second down and seven. Bernowski going nowhere. Third down and seven. I think it's a little worse uh, this week than it was last, Mark, and visually trying to come up with the uh, uh, the players' numbers. I think that we may be able to... Grolke, number 34, the linebacker yeah. that came up with yeah. the tap. Grolke coming up big, so again, this that fires up this 
crowd a little bit. They haven't had a lot to cheer through this first period. Romeoville just uh, pretty much taking control of the game from the opening kickoff and putting two quick scores up on the board. But uh, the defense is, it looks like they've got, got the cobwebs out of the old uh, attic and they're playing a little tough now. Actually a loss of a yard on that play, so it'll be third down and eight. Karnowski again, maybe a yard or two. It'll be fourth down now, Hawkins was there. Well, you don't want to, I mean, if you're Romeoville, you obviously don't want to make any mistakes down here. So they're just going to, you know, give it to their sure-handed man, Bernowski, and see if they can pick up a little bit of yardage, give them a little bit of clearance for this punt. But, uh, again, you got to be, the key here is uh, the snap from Rondell Hale uh, to his punter, 45, Reggie Denard. Cleary and O'Shea are back at about the 38-yard line. And it looks like it's going to be Rocky O'Shea from the 40. Up to the 30, inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. So again, very good field position for Naperville Central with 3.56 to play in the first quarter. Well, a, a, a great return by Rocky O'Shea. He comes straight up, picks up 15 yards, and puts the ball on the 25-yard line. You couldn't ask for any better field position if you're the Red Hawk offense. The defense did their job that time, uh, held the Spartans down on three plays and a punt, three plays and out. So now it's into the hands of the, the offense. And uh, they've got all their offensive weapons out there now. Cronin Boom, Gerwig, Tumulty, everybody. Lavery with some time, now gets it off, passes. Corey Stevens, he's gone, he's in. Oh, he gets knocked out at about the two yard line, a huge hit, Corey Stevens. Ed McDonald with the stick down there. Huge, huge hit, but a take, great play. Take another look at it right here, Todd. Lavery baits the, the lineman. He gets him coming right to him, and there's Stevens, and nobody to touch him. Except right as he gets at the goal line, Ed McDonald comes up with the pop. Puts him out right about the two-yard line, so great play by the offense. Executed very, very well by the lineman. Set up that nice screen. Good play to go with at that particular time. You send all your, all your uh, speedy guys downfield, kind of opens up, spreads the field, and then you just dump it off. You bait the lineman, and they come right. Lavery does a great job of doing that, and uh, Stevens picks up the big yardage. First and goal, Red Hawks. It's Tumulty. Tumulty oh. is in on the second effort. Jim Tumulty got hit at the line, bounced off the tackle. And Jim Tumulty with his 23rd touchdown of the year. Unbelievable. And he's doing it all on a bad leg. But uh, again, he doesn't like to use that as, he's never used that as an excuse. And he is just one tough nosed football player that's going to go. There you see it. He would not be denied that end zone on that particular touchdown. And uh, again, the heart and soul of this, of this team, uh, you know, again, he, he injured his knee the very first uh, practice of the year, missed a couple of games, sat out, found out that he couldn't do any more damage to it, got himself a really nice knee brace, and uh, has just been playing some inspired football ever since. Two-point conversion going nowhere is Sean Galloway, number 90, ripped down Lavery. Sean Galloway, just like Andy Knapp, that one other play, Todd, almost going untouched. Yeah, it, it, it's just a blitz there by the inside linebacker in Galloway. Nobody touched him. It looks like, it was again, Lavery going to roll out to his left, uh, but nowhere to throw that time with the speedy Galloway coming up and putting the stop on the two-point conversion. But Naperville Central on the board. Three minutes, 17 seconds left to play. It's the Romeoville Spartans 14 and the Naperville Central Red Hawks 6. Well, we knew we were in for a plethora of scoring tonight, didn't we, Mark? And we've certainly seen it here. You know, the field conditions are, are bad. I think, again, which defense uh, comes up with the answer to one, the mud, and two, the, uh, the offensive prowess of the, these two very, very intelligent quarterbacks that are directing their squads. The winner will be going downstate to ISU and Hancock Stadium. They will take on the winner of the York Wheaton Warrenville South Bowl game that will be played tomorrow night at York. 
the Tigers and York, both of those ball clubs 10 and 2. And it'll be interesting, Todd, if Naperville Central wins this one and Wheaton Warrenville South wins that other game, a DuPage Valley Championship. That's yourself quite a testimonial to the type of football that's being played right in the, right in the backyard here. From the five-yard line, this is Simic. He comes up the middle at about the 30, maybe a yard shy of it. And the Spartans take over now. Just over three minutes. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, again, the, the, the defense did a great job that last series uh, coming up with a stop. Uh, Romeoville's got about three or four yards and three plays at the one-yard line. Um, now if they can, again, put, put three good plays together on the defensive side, get the ball back in the hands of the offense, um, I think that one would bring the crowd back into it and give the uh, give the Red Hawks a little bit more confidence and just uh, get them on their way to to their quest. First and ten for the Spartans, Jesse Olaski. It's the fullback Bernaski. Bernaski maybe a yard on the play, second down and nine. They've called number 44, Bernaski, quite a bit so far here early. Yeah, Brad, Dave Spiker, Brad Grolke, and a host of Red Hawks in there on that play. But yeah, he has done the, the, uh, the majority of the work for the Spartans this evening. Bernaski uh, on those dives up the middle and the option that Jesse Olowski runs. Again, the big uh, set up that huge 68, 66-yard run by Jesse Olowski uh, for the second score. But uh, this two-back offense, they haven't used the one weapon that, that we thought they might uh, go to, uh, Ryan Taylor, number 47. I'm sure we'll see the ball in his hands at some point in time. Second down and 10, and we've got a flag. Delay of game called against Romeoville, so going to back him up another five. The second down and 15. Now for Romeoville. <laughs> Jeff Buckler with mud all over him. <laughs> kind of holding the arms out like me. I bet they're having fun, though. Oh, yeah. It's the kind of game you have a lot of fun if you're in that offensive line. Dig down a little bit deeper and see if you can throw a little mud in the, the other guy's eye. Second down and 15, Romeoville. Keith Olson, the tight end, will shift over to the far side. And Jesse Olowski on the option will get met in the backfield. It looks like that was number 64, Lee Smentek. Well, again, Smentek and Grolke doing the job, and that, that has been the key. The play of these two outside linebackers slash defensive ends, Josh Hawkins and Brad Grolke, the way that they have gone on defense is basically the way that the defense has played. I mean, in games where they've uh, they've been scored upon quite a bit, uh, they've kind of shut out and haven't had a big impact. But when they're involved in the plays like Grolke was on that last one, uh, the defense plays a heck of a lot better. Third down and 19 for Jesse Olowski and the Spartans. Then they keep it on the ground to Bernaski, who gets maybe five straight up the middle. But they're going to have to punt here. Well, again, the defense is coming out and done what they had to do. And now they're going to put the ball back in the hands of the offense. You know, three and out two consecutive times. So Denard's going to have to go back and uh, punt the ball again. I think they're going to see O'Shea and, and Cleary. You know what I like? Rocky O'Shea. No matter how hot it's been, no matter how cold it's been, he's always worn those small white socks and nothing on his arms. He's a Madden football player, true and true. Madden tells his players you can wear whatever you want first day of season. you got to wear it all the way through, and that's the way Rocky O'Shea is. Rocky will get it at his own 35. He had a good return. This one he gets out to about midfield, I believe. He took a couple of Spartan coaches with him over there. <laughs> well, I think, I think once you're being pushed out of bounds, uh, anybody on the sidelines is fair game. So, I mean, last week in the Michigan-Purdue game, Jim Coletto got smacked in the face, you know, got a nice little stitch or two on his cheek when he was uh, when they were playing in the Mud Bowl at Ann Arbor. So, yeah, right here, here comes O'Shea. Takes a cut. Oh, he, he did get one of the coaches pretty good, didn't he? I don't think he's probably been hit like that for quite some time. Ouch. First and 10 now for the Red Ox from their own 48-yard line. But he's up and ready to make that next call. 
Yeah, this is Tumult. He spins away from one would-be tackler, gets across midfield, and dives to the 43, close to a first down. Did you see how he does that? He just kind of picks the spot, kind of slows up, and then just dives. Just full acceleration back to the right to the left after he moved to the right he's just a phenomenal phenomenal talent take another look at it Todd this is Jim Tumulty at Again. his best boom wraps it around turns it around just like the Barry Sanders whoop I am going right that way right up the gut and that's the end of the first quarter here at Memorial Stadium in Naperville where it's the visiting Romeoville Spartans leading it by a score of 14 to 6 and Todd and I will take this time out as both teams go back to their sidelines. And Burger Todd could be back here at a very muddy Memorial Stadium. Open up second quarter action. Lavery to the air. Pass is complete in the flat to Tumulty. Tries to get behind a blocker, but they get it across midfield to the 46. Still a pretty good game, though, for Naperville Central. Yeah, I, it looks like, again, uh, they're trying to, they're very aggressive defensively up front, Romeoville, and they're kind of letting the defensive linemen uh, penetrate and just dumping the ball off to the short back in the flats for a screen, but that one didn't uh, fare well. It looks like Tumblety didn't use his, uh, line, or his uh, blocking as well as he could have in that particular play. It'll be third down and three now for Naperville Central. And it's Tumulty. Tumulty will get across and I believe pick up that first down. Ryan Taylor comes up with the stick, but again, Tumulty just watching, getting right behind his big offensive lineman on the right side and working his way across the first down, which was the key. That was the first primary goal on that particular play. And then he picked up about three or four more yards. So again, the, the offense looks like they're back in line. They're starting to churn. They're moving, moving the ball down the field uh, like the Red Hawks have been doing you know, throughout this playoff series. 14 to 6 Spartans with under 11 minutes to go in the first half. First and 10. Lavery's going to roll out here to the near side. Under some pressure, and he gets brought back at the 43-yard line. There's his friend, Andy Knapp, coming up with the second, his second, his second sack of the night. Uh, Loss of four on that particular play. Uh, it, I don't know what they're not doing up front with Nab, but he is he and Galloway, they're giving chase to Lavery. And uh, pretty quick fleet of foot, the 6'2", uh, 230-pound defensive end, defensive tackle. Andy Knapp, so Lavery not having a lot of luck with the uh, the blocking of those big guys up front for Romeoville. Second down and 14. Paid in motion as Lavery goes to the air again. And the pass is complete. Kevin Cade at about the 41-yard line, but it'll bring up a third down and still about 10 yards to go. Yeah, he picks up about two yards on that particular play. Cade, again, had made the catch, but uh, kind of had to come back for the ball, and with this footing, uh, just caught the ball and fell down. So it leaves the, the Red Hawks with third and 11 uh, in a real muddy portion of the field. Ronan Boone, number 23, comes out here to the near side as Lavery will go to the air. Third down and 11 to the far side. It's complete. Jason Shear, his main man. And I think he's going to have that first down. It's right by the marker. Tom. Yeah, he definitely worked it past the marker. And the, def the, the defender, Maurice Owens, right there at him. Lavery with a nice ball right to Shear. Shear know, knew where he had to be and then just rolled out of bounds after he got an about another two yards uh, with Maurice Owens around his legs. So again, you go your go-to guys, two of the three amigos right there hooking up, and Jim tumulty has been doing it in the backfield for him. So they, they, they're starting to roll, Mark. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Cade in motion over here to the near side. Lavery fumbles it. Tumulty picks it up, though, but there's going to be a loss of about four on the play. That one just skidded right out of Lavery's hands, and a smart play there by Tumulty. Quickly picked it up, but there was nothing he could do. No, and that, that, that ball is going to, as it gets colder, it's going to get slicker. And the ball just scoots right out. Jason Nold to the center. Uh, Lavery is very lucky that uh, he had Tumulty in the eye that particular time. And the ball just kind of died in the mud once it hit the ground. And 
Jim picked it up, but nowhere to go. Andy Knapp right all over, all over top of him. Back at the 30, Todd. So it'll be second down and 13. Lavery going for it all here to share. Yeah. He's complete, but a flag. Interference call. Yeah, he could. Maurice Owens just had a hold of him right about the eight yard line. And uh, Shear, as he made his break, was wrapped up by number 23, Maurice Owens. So they're going to get the ball in great field position. It just doesn't look like. Oh, they're calling offensive, offensive they're call pass it against interference. Jason Shear. Oh, my. A big turn of events. Yeah. We all thought it was defense. And now look at Jason Shear. He's looking. <laughs> Romeoville, they're all the way back there, too. And that, that doesn't bode well with the crowd. Jason Sear cannot believe it. I mean, the Romeoville team was backed up all the way, too. <laughs> they, uh, they almost conceded that particular penalty, but uh, that's a big t big turnaround there. That would have put the ball down at about first and ten, or excuse me, first and goal on the eight-yard line. Instead, it's going to back it up 15 yards, loss of down, and about third, and I can't tell how far that is, Mark. That's all, about 32 or 33 yards. At least third and about 31. So Cher comes split out here to the near side. Wow, a huge, huge call right there. Let's see how they respond. Third and 30, it's Lavery going all out again to Cher, underthrown, almost picked off by Ed McDonald. Well, that time, Shear was just a little bit skittish of getting called again. He's got his arm around the referee down there now, saying, now that wasn't me that did that, that, did that holding. But again, Lavery throwing, putting the ball up, uh, coming across there, the defensive back. Ed McDonald, but not coming up with the stick, so going to send the Red Hawks back for their, their second punt of the night. And again, Monson did a great job on the first one, pinning the Romeoville Spartans at their one-yard line. Reggie Denar back deep for Romeoville. He'll let this one roll inside the 20. Well, Monson's doing the job on the punt for the punts. I mean, that was a that was an ugly punt, but it certainly got the roll and got it down right at the 10-yard line. So he's doing a fantastic job pinning the Romeoville Spartans back in deep in their territory. And the defense has come up big, uh, at least on the first time that they were were stuck way down in um, in Romeoville land. So let's see how they come up this time. Just over eight minutes to go. First half, Romeoville 14, Naperville Central 6. Mark Kruger, Todd Kibbe coming to you from Memorial Stadium for this Class 6A semi-final contest. We'll see if the Spartans stick with Bernaski, the fullback. They went with him primarily here in the first half. It is Bernaski. No, that, Jesse Olowski, hey held on to that one. He, he faked the ball into Bernowski on that particular play, but they just seem to be a little bit slow. Again, the, 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 the movement off the ball from Romeoville on, on their options just hasn't been very quick, and I think it's due to the conditions tonight, Mark. Obviously due to the conditions. Second down and seven. You mentioned at the top, Todd, absolutely no wind to speak of, but that field certainly is muddy. But a lot better than a week ago. A lot better than a week ago. Second down and seven now for the Romeoville Spartans. Jesse Olowski to Simic. Number 24, Simic gets across for about two yards. It'll bring up third down and five. Looks like he got into a little clean air over there on the unmuddied side. Uh, able to turn the ball up off the left side, but short side of the field. But again, the running game uh, is kind of kind of gone a little bit south here for Romeoville. They haven't been able to put together a whole heck of a lot. Uh, and I think that's uh, in part, part and parcel to the fact the the Red Hawk defense is, uh, is, after those first two touchdowns, I think they're back in line with where they need to be. Third and five. It's Bernoski, and he's not going to get the first down. A little bit short of that 20-yard line, so 
It's going to bring up a, the, another punting situation for Romeoville. So again, the Donald's coming in, Todd, uh, punked it away. Yeah, the, the defense is doing a great job. They, they were stunned quick. Uh, they recovered well. The defensive coordinator certainly um, to be commended for the, the way that he's he's kind of settled the defense down. Uh, and uh, now it's the offense's turn. Again, a bad, bad luck on the last play with the uh, with the interference on Shear, but uh, they need to put something together. Actually, it's Reggie Denard with a good punt. Right at midfield is Jim Cleary, and he will bring it back. About an eight-yard return. That's where the Red Hawks will take over, and again, pretty good field position looking to tie this one up. Well, I don't think they've been, they've had to start from their own, uh, only one time I think they've had to start in their own territory, so, you know, the the Red Hawks defense is, or excuse me, the offense, the defense has done a great job. The offense has put together a couple of, uh, a couple of good drives, but uh, have only come up with six points thus far in the first half. Just over five minutes to play in the first half, 14 to six in favor of Romeoville. It's Lavery to the air across the middle, and it's caught, brought back. Todd brought back the tight end. Todd, we've seen this the last couple of weeks. He likes to go to his junior tight end, and that time he was open over the middle. Well, Grotbeck does does the work that uh, the Jason Shear he does the work over the middle, where Shear does works the outsides, works the sidelines. Grotbeck is the man over the middle, and he has been coming up with some big catches, some big fourth down catches in the past couple of games to keep drives alive, and he is certainly becoming a go-to man uh, for that. Naperville Central offense. First and ten Red Hawks. Cade coming in motion, but a flag on the play. I think they're going to call Jason Shear offsides because, again, he's... Jason's just, just isn't having a good <laughs> good first half here. He's just not... Uh, he just can't seem to... I think he's got something... Uh, that uh, referee down there may have something against him. <laughs> I don't know. He keeps calling, calling fouls on him. But um, he, was, he was lined up offside. So that's hence the flag. And, uh, but I think knowing, uh, knowing Jason, I'm sure he'll come back with, uh, with a couple of spectacular catches later in this ballgame. So with the penalty, it'll be first and 15 from the 23-yard line, 440 to play in the first half. Lavery with the pitch. Tumulty will try to kick it to the outside, and he does inside the 10-yard line. <laughs> Phenomenal run. I mean, he should have been stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he just picked and chose his way around. He, he got behind his blockers. He uses his block. He's, he's a smart back. I mean, he's not that big. He's only about 5'10", or 5'8", 5'10". But he uses his blockers so well. He's an intelligent runner. And he knows how to get the most out of the yards, uh, the most yards out of a run that that, uh, that is allowed to him. Excuse me, he's 5'10", 185 pounds. I want to get that right. A 14-yard gain, Todd. So it'll be second down and one from the nine. Lavery gives it to Tumulty, and I believe he'll have the first down. It'll be first and goal from about the eight with under four minutes to play first half. Well, it looks like Andy Knapp again with the stop, but Tumulty picks up the first down, so it's going to be first and goal at the six for the Red Hawks. Three minutes and 52 seconds to play first half, 14 to six in favor of the number four seeded Romeoville Spartans. I got some beach lakefront property I want to sell you there, Mark. Right in about the 50 yard line. <laughs> First and goal, Red Hawks, it's Lavery, and why not give it to Tumulty? He'll bounce off a couple of tackles and get brought down right at about the line of scrimmage by number 20, Eric Mays. And second and goal from the five, so they'll give him a yard on the play. Mays and the, the inspirational leader of the Romeoville Spartans, number 90, Sean Galloway. Uh, coming up with a stick on, on Tumulty that time. So this would be a great opportunity if, if the Romeoville Spartans could come up with a stop here, come up with an answer. Uh, 
but of course Central is, is trying to get even at this point. Lavery looking for Cher. And it's touchdown. Lavery to Jason Cher in the right corner. I knew Jason would get out of his little funk that he's been in through this first first quarter, first half. Jason shares 14th Beautiful. touchdown of the season. Take another look at it. Rolling to his right, throwing against his body, right to the man, the only person that could have caught that ball. Jason Shear puts it out away from the defenders, and again, that's the expertise of, of Tim Lavery and the, just the confidence that this program has in his abilities, Jason Shear's abilities, and Jim Tumulty. Each one of those guys had a significant contribution to that particular drive. You cannot factor out the offensive line. Jerry Cut. Uh, certainly with the with the field the way it is, you, you, you opt for the two point, give it a shot here at this at this particular juncture right before the half. Lavery is gonna go to the air, rolling out here to the near side. Complete to Jason Shear was he in. Grotbeck was the one, and he was in. They're going to give it to uh, for Naperville Central with 2.46 to play here in the first half. And a big hit at about the... You may want to start using some timeouts, get the ball back, and put it back in the hands of your offense if you're Naperville Central here. Jesse Lossky fumbles. Does he fall back on it? It's still loose back at about the 26. <laughs> it's up for grabs here. Uh, Jim Cleary saying, and Rocky O'Shea both giving their opinion. Red Hawks think they have it. I bet somebody's getting a little bit of mud in the eye right now. What do you think, Mark? Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Hawkins, the bottom of the pile, fighting it out and for that ball and get it. First and ten now, Naperville Central, Lavery to Tumulty with plenty of room. Inside the 20, inside the 10, he cuts back. Close to the goal line. It's going to be first and goal, Jim Tumulty. And we're going to take another look at it. Potential for Central to pick up seven. First and goal from the two. It's Tumulty, and he does not get in. Brought down by number four, Hawkins. You got uh, number four, Tumulty. I'm sure somebody with the number four is going to touch the ball here. We've seen Hawkins come out of that backfield for a reception, but it's going to be Lavery up the middle himself. And he is in. Touchdown for Tim Lavery. Again, I think that's it's a wise wise call. The footing is just terrible out there, and the kicking game is probably going to be non-existent tonight. Lavery is going to go over here to the near side. The pass is good. Complete. 20 to 14. Kind of a delay call from the official. He put up his up. And they didn't pick the game up until about the fourth period when they had to come back from a two-touchdown deficit. But I don't think they were going to let themselves get in that situation here tonight, getting down by two touchdowns early. Romeoville gets it out to the... See anything spectacular right here. Go in with halftime, kind of clean up a little bit and uh, regroup for the second half. Jesse Olaski gives to Pernowski. Spins away but meets Brad Grolke, number 34. A loss 